If you can this morning, imagine if you were one of the disciples. You were born and raised in Galilee. This rabbi shows up and chooses you. He says, remember, you didn't choose me. I, I chose you. And he chose you. And you begin to walk with him. Imagine the experiences of seeing him do his first miracle, turning water into wine. You see the lame walk, the dumb speak, the blind see, the dead raised to life, demons cast out, walks on water, breaks the bread. And you begin to believe this is the Messiah. Do you ever wonder what you would discuss among yourselves as a disciple? Guys, this is him. What's he going to do next? What's getting ready to happen here? Are, are we going to be with him the rest of our lives? Is he going to send us out again? We weren't too prepared the last time. Maybe he's going to break us up two by two and we're going to go all over the world. But something's changing. The tone's beginning to change. He's talking about heading to Jerusalem and you understand this story because the text foretells it. The king is coming, going to take the throne. He's going to march into Jerusalem, establish the kingdom of David gathers you together and says, guys, it's time to go pack your bags. And now you're going, what do I pack? What do you pack for a Messiah entering Jerusalem? You grab your best cloak, you try to get the best shoes that you have, and you're remembering his teaching that sometimes don't take anything with you. And fortunately, you had just a few, few dollars with you, and, and you had your knife. Because a Messiah is entering Jerusalem. But then there's something nagging you in the back of your mind. What is he going to do about Rome? How's he going to do that? It's one thing to raise one person from the dead. It's one thing to feed the 5,000. But what about the masses that are getting ready to send into this holy city for Passover? What about the legions of Roman soldiers, the thousands upon thousands of Roman soldiers guarding every gate, inspecting every visitor? What's he going to do about that? But again, the question comes back to you. Is it now that the kingdom of heaven will be restored to Israel? Is it now? It sounds like it is. You're walking towards Jerusalem. What discussion are you going to have? Where are we going to stay? What are we going to do? Two of you peel off, James and John, and corner this Messiah and says, Hey, when you enter into your kingdom, can we sit on the right and left of you? Thomas, hearing some of this discussion about Jesus having to go to Jerusalem to die, he says, Guys, let's get together. Let's go up with him to die. Over and over, the disciples are ready. Let's go. Rome, we're going to take over the kingdom. March into Jerusalem, overthrow the government, and take the throne. With that being said, I want to read something to you. And when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it, bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and we'll send it back here immediately. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And as he rode along, most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others spread palm branches, which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. When he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it saying, if you, even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build a wall against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. 
didn't recognize it. Why does Jesus cry? Is he crying because not everybody is yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna? Is he crying because his disciples are in effect yelling, kill the Romans, kill the Romans, kill the Romans? Everybody there was waving the palm branch saying, this is the Messiah. They knew it. They weren't doubting if it was or not. That's not the point. Christ is saying, it's not if you're accepting me as the Messiah. I'm asking you to do something. I'm asking you to live a little bit different. Disciples marching in, we talked about it early on, marching into Jerusalem. Let's go up and die with him. Let's go, let's join, let's march into Jerusalem. Just think, we're going to move into the palace. We're going to have streets lined with gold. Sit on a cloud and play our harp. Christ saying, no, I need you to pick up your cross. It's not going to be easy. It's not. Those of you that have walked in the faith know it's not easy. But we have someone who looks at us and weeps with us and says, I will give you the strength. Take no thought for tomorrow. Daily, he gives us the strength just to, to take another step. I love the verses in Isaiah. It says, see, a king will reign in righteousness, and a ruler will rule with justice. And each one of us will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. Then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed, and the ears of those who hear will listen. You want to change the world, be some shade, be some living water, provide shelter to somebody who needs it.